Hello, comic fans. Here's Al Gray. Um, it's Philip Drie time once again uh, after quite a while. Actually, I want to talk about this book here, Delirious 2, recently published by Titan Books. But since this is obviously a sequel to Delirious, the original story, um, first published in around 1970, uh, this is my German edition here. Um, yeah, let's talk real quick. Uh, about Delirious, even though I've shown you already uh, in an earlier video some of these beautiful pages, but I mean, you can't get enough of this stuff here. Uh, it's just like each and every Philippe Trier book, a visual stunner with gorgeous uh, panel layouts and double page art and overboarding imagination uh, with these MC Escher references and, and so on. So Delirious is really highly recommended. I mean, you have to take some, let's say, a uh, very idiosyncratic depiction of the characters sometimes because Philippe Drouillet's figure drawings are not always the strong point in his art, but um, it's redeemed big time by pages like this here that just make your chin drop to the uh, floor. Um, yeah, fantastic book, but this book here separated a bit from the rest of all the Philippe Trier books was a pretty straightforward uh, plot. Uh, it's an heist story on an um, entertainment planet, uh, adult entertainment and, and, and bordellos and um, whatever, and uh, called Delirious, so you can enjoy until <laughs> until uh, this planet, until your money is gone and, and you're in a delirious state or whatever. And um, yeah, and Lone Sloan, it's be it belongs obviously to the Lone Sloan uh, series uh, and his friend, they plan a heist there and there are some twists and turns, but overall it's a pretty, yeah, I have to say it, simple plot, which is really not a bad thing uh, paired with this very overboarding Baroque art of Philippe Drie. It is a quite unique match. So, um, the, since the story was by Philippe Drie's friend here, um, Jacques Loeb, um, Delirious is really, yeah, um, the work of both of them. So it was quite a blow, uh, not only uh, in terms of his aspirations as a cartoonist, but uh, he lost a friend, as you can see here in this book, when uh, Jacques Loeb died in 1990. This was three years after they actually started um, the new well, the sequel del called Delirious 2. So the sketches uh, were a bit a fragment of a fragment that uh, stay stood in state in the drawer of uh, Philippe Trouillet and he picked them up over decades. The pro whole project was restarted in 2010. So no wonder that on the very first glance you have a very disjointed story. Uh, not only the story is a bit disjointed, but the art as well. I mean, look at this stuff here. These uh, are really the first sketches or some of the first sketches of Philippe Drouillet that he hasn't reworked since. Uh, maybe as an yeah, artistic statement or he was just determined to really uh, yeah, show the beginnings of the story here, art-wise even. The colors are not by him, but by one uh, Mr. Fernandez, um, Jean-Paul Fernandez. But they are very fitting and I really overlooked uh, the colorist. I just took it for granted that Philippe Trier uh, was uh, the man behind the colors as well. But yeah. They really, they hold the story or the art uh, together here. And again, story-wise, they took a pretty simple trope here. It's um, a kidnapping story. Uh, he, he meets his friend uh, with whom he was on Delirious in the first part of the story. 
and he has now a daughter but she was uh, kidnapped and so they go to uh, Delirious 2 to bring her back again uh, so that's yeah, the, the plot, the core of the plot, but of course we have all the stuff around it uh, and it is very uh, almost a, uh, a bullshit bingo <laughs> in terms of Star Wars references. I mean, uh, it's almost like Philippe Drouillet had, um, yeah, obviously he had his fun uh, in pointing out all the references and, and the similarities to the Star Wars um, epos. Um, if you will, you can say it was all there in Delirious 1, but there are so many stories out there that um, say, hey, we have a bit of... We invented actually Star Wars uh, that I not always go uh, with that assumption. But we have here the Rebels, we have the Order of the Red Redemption, and we have the um, Bad Imperium. Uh, we have some fighters who look pretty much like stormtroopers and and so on but um, it's all just part of a bigger story i mean here you have this big fortune wheel i guess you call it or a ferris wheel yeah. and lots of these double page uh, spreads that should answer your question if you're a philip tree fan should i get this of course, of course. Uh, but if you have never uh, read something from Philippe Trouillet before, I would rather recommend uh, the other Lone Sloan stories uh, that were drawn uh, and, and created uh, before uh, to start with them. If you're a fan of these double page layouts, you can't go really wrong uh, with uh, this book here. Uh, and this is here is almost a summary of uh, my assessment of this book here. Um, the figure drawings lack a bit of love and detail, while uh, the overall uh, yeah, two-page uh, layouts and, and the art in general uh, and, and these background designs that uh, actually take the main stage pretty easily, they are fantastic as always even though I wonder what uh, was beneath that black square there. But it's this opera bombast, this, um, and a bit of the nihilistic worldview, quite a bit of the nihilistic worldview of Lone Sloan and uh, Philip Trouillet himself shines through in, in, in lots of these uh, pieces and these uh, texts here can't call them really speech bubbles they're sometimes really long commentaries on on the world uh, that we are shown here and our world uh, in which we live uh, we readers live so um the last thing here in the book is um yeah are some preliminary sketches i mean uh these are really wild and I'm almost glad that uh, I didn't choose them as the template uh, for um, Jean-Paul Fernandez to color. This would be have been a bit too loose. Yeah, quite an interesting book, pretty disjointed in, in parts, but overall, yeah, just um, another fantastic Philippe Trier book. Oh, before I end this video, it has almost become uh, some kind of tradition to look at the color reproduction uh, very closely because not uh, all of these Titan books were really up to snuff uh, with other editions. But in this case, I think they did a splendid job. Unfortunately, I don't have another edition uh, to compare this book to, so maybe you can inform me if there is another book out there that had done a better uh, line reproduction or color reproduction or has uh, superior printing qualities whatsoever. But I really would be surprised if uh, this is the case. This looks awesome. and. Um, like they did this time everything right here um so yeah just wanted to inform you about that and uh
I guess that's it for now. And yeah, cool. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.